A federal judge has ruled the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Policy, or DACA, can temporarily continue. Under Friday's ruling, the DACA program will continue to serve roughly 600,000 recipients who arrived in the U.S. as children. However, it will not accept new applications. The order comes as the Department of Health and Human Services reports an all-time high in the number of migrant children placed in U.S. federal shelters. CBS News immigration reporter Camilo Montoya Galvez joins us with more insight. Camilo, how will the DACA program change starting on October 31st? Hi, Catherine. This is the latest ruling in a five-year-old legal battle now over this Obama administration policy. DACA, for now, will remain in place for the nearly 600,000 so-called DREAMers who are currently enrolled in the program, which allows them to live and work here legally without fear of deportation. These are immigrants who arrived in the U.S. as children. They do not have legal status, and they had to satisfy certain eligibility rules to qualify for DACA, including not having serious criminal records. But under this new court order, Catherine, and this is very important, the Biden administration is still prohibited from approving new first-time DACA applications. That means that new immigrants cannot be enrolled in DACA. And so this is how this program will be administered until a new court ruling is made on this matter. So does the ruling mean that DACA is still in legal jeopardy? Yes, very much so. This program still faces significant legal challenges, Catherine, from a coalition of Republican-led states led by Texas who argue that the Obama administration did not have the legal authority to grant work permits and deportation protections to hundreds of thousands of unauthorized immigrants. We know that a judge in Texas is now reviewing the legality of a series of Biden administration rules that aim to codify DACA into a federal regulation. And this is a case, Catherine, that could very much reach the Supreme Court, uh, which uh, in 2016 blocked a similar Obama administration policy through a 4-4 split. And as you know, Catherine, the Supreme Court over the past few years has become more conservative. Mm -hmm. Putting the legal fight and the politics to one side, you're also reporting a record number of migrant children now in U.S. custody. Mm -hmm. What is driving these high numbers still? Yeah, the Department of Health and Human Services, Catherine, received nearly 130,000 unaccompanied migrant children from U.S. border officials in fiscal year 2022. That is an all-time high that su surpassed the previous record set in 2014 and in 2019 when the Obama and Trump administrations really struggled to process what at the time were historic numbers of unaccompanied minors crossing the U.S.-Mexico border unlawfully. We know that the President Biden's administration has faced an unprecedented wave of child migration, and there's really no one single reason behind it, driving it. We know that there are persistent conditions in Central America where the vast majority of these children are from, like poverty and violence that prompt young people and families to journey to the U.S. either alone or with relatives. We also know that family reunification is a major driver of migration. According to the Department of Homeland Security Statistics, about 80 percent of the unaccompanied children who enter U.S. custody, Catherine, have family members here who are willing to sponsor them out of federal custody. And we also know that human smugglers, Catherine, have been telling poor families and teenagers in Central America that unaccompanied minors are virtually guaranteed an opportunity to stay here in the U.S. Uh, because of federal law. Federal law requires the Biden administration and other administrations, frankly, to stop the quick deportations of unaccompanied children and to transfer those unaccompanied children mm -hmm. to HHS within three days of apprehending them at the U.S.-Mexico border. So there is a policy in place right now that protects them from being deported quickly, unlike single mm -hmm. adults and families with children, Catherine. We just have a few seconds left, but I want to go back to that uh, statistic, that 129,500. Do you have any sense mm -hmm. of the ages involved? We know that historically the vast majority, Catherine, of these unaccompanied children are teenagers from the ages of 15 to 17. Most of them are from three countries, El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras, the Northern Triangle of Central America. Camilo Montoya Galvez, thank you. Thanks, Catherine.